the comments from my respected elder brother, Kwan Kwasun, is the reason why we have 100 million Nigerians living in poverty. The reason why we have 18 million Nigerian children out of school, it is the reason why we have over 55% of Nigerians in under unemployment ladder. It's the reason why we have all the problems, why Nigeria is insecure. Because rather than vote for competence, we will choose to vote for incompetence based on a primitive consideration of ethnicity and religion. Tell me, today you can't travel from Abuja to Kaduna by air, by road, by train. Is it because someone from the South East is in charge? You can't travel from Abuja to Mina by road. Is it because somebody from the South East is in charge? Yesterday we have we had an attack by bandits on the presidential convoy in Kansuna. Is it because the president from South East is in charge? Show me where you can buy food cheaper. You have uninterrupted electricity. Or people are prospering in the north because the northerners are in power, in the southwest because they are in power, and the southeast. What we've chosen to do in this country, we will consistently hire vehicle drivers to fly the Nigerian aeroplane, instead of hiring qualified pilots. My commitment is let us campaign and deal with the issue of the problems of the country. There's a lot of problems besieging this country. If you don't know today, this country will soon default in their death service. Now we'll be at the junk status. That's what should be preoccupying us now. So our schools, universities are shut down, and we're talking about who will vote for. Let's deal with the issues. This election will not be based on my turn. It will not be based on ethnicity. It will not be based on religion. It will be based on the Nigerian agenda to save this Nigeria. Nigeria is in coma. And you need a specialist. And that is what I'm offering. To save his life or he will die. It is not about where, whether this person am appealing to people to vote to save Nigeria. And to save Nigeria is to hire the best. I don't want people to vote for me because I'm from the Southeast. I don't want people to vote for me because I'm from South South or I'm from Southwest or Northwest or Northeast or North Central. I want them to vote for P2B because he's a Nigerian who is competent to start pulling Nigeria out of the mess it is today. He also said that, you know, the Igbos are, are on the lower ladder of Nigerian politics. I mean, we keep hearing that word. In fact, when we had the uh, uh, spokesperson of the NNPP, somebody that, spoke, uh, that did speak on behalf of the NNPP uh, yesterday, uh, I think a couple of days ago, if my memory serves me right, that's Elijah Bubba Kaladima. He equally enunciated, you know, those views that, you no, know, it must be the Igbos that, uh, yeah, it's on Monday. Yeah, thank you so much. That, uh, that um, the Igbos should be the one to be vice presidential candidate. So tell us about everything, about this, you know, NMPP partnership and everything. Is it still working or is it dead on arrival? Well, I'm not going to talk about the, the alliance because maybe some people are talking about alliance, but I want to look at their comments. Often a time, you see, you work here. Often a time, we tend to neglect those on the lower ladder. They might be the solution. They might be the solution. And those comments are comments that should not be on the table today because we have a problem. My candidacy is actually meant to solve those problems, to stop 
referring those who are higher because okay those who are higher ladder have brought us where we are maybe we need those on the lower ladder to be able to deal with it and that's what even his comment let me take a, a large but one of the most comment which you said he said i'm competent to be the vice president because of my knowledge of the economy let me tell you nigerian problem is the economy so why do you want somebody who has knowledge of what the, the problem is to be vice that is what i'm saying you want to use the the, the people who should be on reserve bank to be the to start the match when no he mentioned it that i have the knowledge the nigerian problem is the economy it is the economy because people don't have job, because people don't have means of livelihood, you push them into criminality, into agitation, into all sorts of problems we're facing today. And that is what I'm saying, that I have the knowledge to start pulling these people out of poverty. My candidacy and the team I want to assemble, young, sharp people will start mitigating the dangers we're facing today. I will start dealing with the cutting costs in order to be able to pull Nigerians out of poverty, to be able to reduce. Go and look at it. So it is actually what is telling you what Bubba Gladima said. I will say is Peter B is qualified to be vice president. Everybody has said it, not just Bubba Gladima. You've heard other people like Chief Servant in Niger said, everybody said he's competent. But what is the problem of Nigeria? Economic problem. Right, so I know you're raring to get to the issues, but unfortunately, identity politics is still at issue in this country. So I do also have to raise comments made by Alaji Madi Shehu, chairman of the Dialogue Group, on another show on the Arise News Network, where he said that during your time as governor of Anambra, you wanted northerners working in Anambra to wear a badge of identification. Frankly, that sounds like something out of Nazi Germany, where Jews had to wear a yellow badge, and that it was only until the intervention of Senator Rabbi Kwakwa so that you then backed down from that idea. He also raised this issue that was trending on social media, an allegation that your son was the person pictured who was dressed in Biafran attire standing on the Nigerian flag. I'd like you to address those two issues. Well, I will even add that he mentioned the issue of my sponsoring IPOB. Let me tell you, I've said it. One, go and check the records and check his facts. I've never been involved in sponsoring any agitation, be it IPOB or anyone. I've never. In 2017, which I'm sure you referred, I made a comment. I said, I, I pop and all other agitations as a result of leadership failure over the years that failed to address the critical areas of development. So it was the creation of the things we're a creation of government. And I can say today that if I'm in power, I would deal decisively with all agitations through dialogue and through, through proper leadership. And when I finish that, if there are remnants of criminal in it, I deal with it decisively. That's what is happening everywhere. I followed issue of agitations globally. I do things with studies, and it can be dealt with. On issue of badge and identification, it's a lie. It never happened. And let me tell you, throughout the time I was governor, Kwakwaso never visited me. I can't remember. If I'd, I probably haven't met Kwakwaso until maybe, I don't know, it's, it's, there are people I met maybe after I became governor or not close to him. You know, he's somebody that I see as a senior brother, respect me, but he never visited me as a governor or intervened on anything. And to tell you why it's a lie, all the commissioners that sat with me throughout the time I was in office are from the north. I never had the privilege of having any commissioner from southwest, south south. They are all from the north. I can show you six of them, from John Haruna 
So now, so most of them, if I told them I want Kanu, my ADC, Mohammed, this one Kanu. So who will I order? Will I give them an order to go and deal with their own people? No, every other person calls his brother, his sister, his mother, this to be his ADC. My ADC is from Kanu, and we remain close to today. Very, very close. You can go and ask him. I'm not somebody who asks that. On the issue of my son, it is not my son. My son is a professional who is consumed by his... Yeah. Let me tell you, I just came back from London. I can't even see my son. He's, he's consumed by her work. He will tell me that, listen, Dad, I like, oh, how are you? It's politicized your campaign. I like what you're doing. To me, I can exchange my messages with my son. My son will tell you, listen, Dad, I don't have time for this. I did this and this. I stayed in a week in New York. I could not see my son because he was busy doing what he's doing. So he doesn't have time for that. That thing happened in Germany. My son doesn't live in Germany, he lives in the UK. Okay. And he's consumed by his work. Okay. And I want Elijah, I can tell him, I'll bet any amount for anybody to prove or say that is my son. He's shorter. He's this, in, you know, okay. so. Okay. So let's go to some key issues. Social media was a gorgeous yesterday that you had a vice presidential candidate already, you know, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed. I mean, what's your take on that? What's your take on vice presidential candidate? And also, I'd like to ask you, since you're speaking about the issues, you were in Morocco at some point, you were in Egypt, you said you are going to study the past sector. A lot of people are saying, why don't you talk to the stakeholders here? That shows that you're not prepared for this job when you're going around to study. Okay, Those well, truth to the issue of vice presidential candidates, um, we're talking to quite a number of people. And, you know, that is that I mentioned. He's very qualified. I wish he's the one, you know, because. What am I trying to do? It's people like him that actually would like to work with. One, I wish I can work with a, somebody who is much younger because we need to start lowering the, 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 these barriers of this and bring people, younger people with fresh ideas, with uh, something to offer, than just keep recycling this um, ourselves and claiming we have been there too for several times or we, is our turn or is that children? No, 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 we need to start dealing with. So that we're talking to and we will announce it as soon as we're ready, and which will be very soon. On issue so are you confirming, you're confirming that you're speaking to Dati and other aspirants? There's, and some, there's quite a number of people who are speaking. And Dati might be the person because he's... So I, I said, look, look at what I said. I said, yeah. I wish he's... No, you're wrong. You can't do this. Because that's what we need. We need to save this country. And you can only do that with the team. On the issue of my traveling, let me tell you, leadership and learning is inseparable. If they tell you somebody is doing something well, you go and learn. What are they doing? What are they not doing? And that has taken me, from the time I've started this experiment or getting involved in politics, I've been to 31 countries learning. It is important, it's critical. You asked specifically, I was in Morocco. Why did I go to Morocco? Morocco, just to show you, Morocco is about 36 million. Their export last year was over 50 billion dollars. They don't know this on oil. In our own, with oil included, it's under 30 billion, and we're 200 million. Morocco didn't export any oil. But if the natural resource was small, it was mainly manufactured goods. You vehicle alone was almost 10 billion. In Morocco, Morocco runs the best airport, uh, seaport in Africa, doing twice the tonnage, cargo tonnage of the old Nigerian post two together. Morocco. So I have to go there. Morocco is doing so well that today, Morocco issues bond, euro bond, at two, three percent. Nobody can, today in Nigeria, people are skeptical about buying Nigerian bond, even at 14, 15 percent. So, a differential of about 10 to 13 percent. Morocco. I have to go and see what they're doing. 
I drove from Rabat, the capital, to the port. In three and a half hours, no police, no thing. Check road, go to the port. You wouldn't even know. You think there's nothing happening in the port. I was there. I they viewed the people and everything. That's why I went there. Do you know what they're doing that we're not doing? You learn. I went to Egypt. Egypt, Vietnam, India, they plot the highest, fastest electricity in the past five years. And I said, let me start with Egypt. I'm going to go to the other ones. Egypt moved their power generation distribution from less than 20,000 in 2015 to okay. today, 58,000. Those who are asking, you know what the Avengers are That's what they did. You need to go and see what they were able to do. Today, Egypt power requirement is 30,000 megawatts. Okay. Their generation and distribution is 58,000. I want to study who did the plant? Where are the contractors? How did they get the funding? I've been able to ascertain, I visited the plants, mm. went to the company that built it, met with the CEOs, not the small people, the CEOs of the companies that are involved, went to the power holding company of Egypt, met the top people in government who are involved in this, you know, Talked a bit with the financiers in Egypt. I've also gone to Europe to meet the financiers. Refine. What you hear, what you see here, that people go into government and start giving excuses. What I saw when I came in, what we did. I want to see everything now. Calculate the sources of which I'm going to solve it. So when I go there, I hit the ground running. That's what but, I did in Alan Brasset. Some people are saying, I, have you talked I'm to talking the local the, I'm talking to the stakeholders I wasn't telling you about the power sector the here. Same, the, based on what they told me is why I'm studying this. That's why I'm going to. I don't want to come there and they said, fine, I don't want to go there and start giving excuses. The job of a leader is not to give excuses, it's to solve a problem. I don't want to be one of those who will be hired, and when I go there, I start reminding them of where they're coming from. When you're hired, you're hired because the person there is not doing well. So your job so is to... So after talking to the local people here, that's when you went to Egypt to look completely, for Completely, completely. And the local I... people here didn't provide any solutions? No, 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 no. They have their, they, you have to blend all these ideas. They have to, they've done their own and everything. Let me take, give you an issue of security. I was with the idea of police the other day. I went and asked him this, but I was asking him, because you must solve this thing. There's other people I'm going to talk to, Minister of Finance, Minister of Planning. You have to know this is before you get in there. Know when you go in there, say what you saw. You must see everything before you get there. So I so want to take you back to how you talk to the local people here. Yeah. Tell us why. Because in Egypt, they have the same agreement, don't they, with Siemens. As we have here, Siemens Presidential Initiative in three phases, upgrade of our transmission grids, discos, new power stations. It simply has not worked here yeah, thus the, far. Yeah. Why? Because, because we're not serious. You know, in this political way, let me tell you, in Egypt, to conceive a power plant, from beginning to end. So say, we're going to, you are Rascom, you are Siemens, we're going to combine, you're going to build this power plant. All the things they need to do last for 45 days. In Egypt, they put power, security of life and property, education, health and power as a national security issue. Very soon, because they found out that the, one of the things that cost, contributed to riots of 2011-2012 when they did the other swings was power. Small businesses did not have power, so they collapsed. And they contributed to that, and people were unemployed. And that was a problem. So they looked at the education, the children, people, education, all those issues were bundled and they put it at national, and they're dealing with it decisively. So if you go to Egypt and see what they're doing in education, in health, in security, and everything, 
give you the issue of the power vesting. If you go to the power holding company, on the wall of the CEO, chairman of power holding company, you see all the generations, all the all of it, all the distribution utilization. The day I was there, the entire utilization was 27.8 thousand megawatts. Total generation was 52,000. So they have almost double that amount. They're not utilizing. If you go to the same thing, the minister, the same thing is in place, there's organization. So here, we don't have that. It's all stories. They've told me meetings upon meetings. That's why I said I must learn. Why is this not happening? Let me know whether we are cost. Or are we the cost? That's what I went to do. And that's what I'm studying everywhere. So that's Basically, what I did. You can't be told. You have to actually see it there, observe it, experience it. And Completely. That's why I went to the port. Why would Morocco, with 36 million people, have a, 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 a tonnage to have a better port than we have with 200 million people? Let, let's, okay. Okay, let's talk subsidies. In the last 10 years, subsidies has got over 40 billion. It's a sinking pipe. What would you do about subsidies? Would you remove subsidies? What's the definitive answer? Well, you, you, thank you. I was going to mention that is, we have spent over 40 billion dollars in subsidies. Rufai, our total education expenditure in the past 10 years Total education expenditure in the past, in fact, 12 years is about 8 trillion. Mm. So, about 10, in 10 years, about 8 trillion. 8 trillion is about 20, let me use 400, it's about 20 billion dollars. Mm. Tell me, Rufai, which country of the world, the most too critical, too critical, too critical engine of development is health and education. And your expenditure in health and education in the past 10 years is about $20 billion. Go and check the records. And you spent 40 in subsidy. $40 billion. $40 billion subsidy. Refine to even add. The, this is 50% of it. If we have spent the next 20 billion in power, we would have been generating and distributing today 20,000 megawatts. Of we electricity. spent 16 billion or 16 trillion thereabout in the absurdity. They keep using that 16 billion yeah, for me, number in power. For me, yeah. I don't want to deal with the issue of the past. That's what they said, vast adjustment. But I'm saying in the past 10 years, and I'm talking about 2010. Or 2012 to 2022. Within this period, this is what we have spent in subsidy alone. Yeah. That means subsidy alone would have solved a lot of our issues in education, in health, and in power. If we have 20,000 megawatts of electricity today, I can assure you that we'll be growing at more than 4%. I would have added over 100 billion dollars in our GDP. So, what it is is that this is just subsidy. Within the same period, as you know, we've borrowed 90 billion dollars. Mm. So, subsidy of 40, you borrowed about 90 billion dollars, mm. which your service, if you put the debt service in, you could see a total mismanagement of resources that would have changed the entire north. That vast land would have been a huge farmland. But, but sorry to cut you The argument has always been over the years. It is labor that has been stopping the government from removing something. You remember 2012 Occupy Nigeria protest, labor, and now you are in the party set up by the Labour Party, and you are a free market capitalist in the party called Labour Party. So no, labor no, no, has also no, played no. a role in stopping no, the removal no, of subsidy. No, All this you. while, that's another argument. No, no, let me tell you the argument. Let me tell you, is people, it is not entirely so. Labor has never been against stopping of subsidy. 
can, can you convince Labour? No, that, let me that tell you, you we, we will do it properly because Rufai, if you audit what we are importing and consuming, there's no way we'll be this amount. And you have to convince people. Let me tell you why people are against removal of subsidy. People are against removal of anything because whenever it's been done, they did not see the benefit with the privatization. We didn't see the benefit. What we did is that we privatized profits, socialized losses. We did everything we've done. We did all that things here that have been done everywhere. If you say you're going to remove this, what are we getting here? The problem you have in Nigeria is that they've removed this. Nobody got anything here. So we are going to do it in such a way that it will be transparent. This is the amount we of our importation. This is the amount we are going to spend. And if we reduce it or do this, this is what you are going to get. And you deliver that. People will believe you. I've been able to return schools in Anambra State or do things that when I was doing it, people say, no, you cannot do it. Have you go and watch what my former head of service wrote? Stinginess as a strategy of development. He showed how I cut the cost of everything and showed what I used it to do. You must not come and say, we're going to remove this. What are we going to get as a remove? Because of mistrust. Because the whole thing has been embedded in transaction and stealing of, you know, so people are not, don't want to hear it. But you cannot spend that amount of subsidy when you help education and pulling people out of poverty suffering. So you remove subsidy? Well, like I said, everything has to be, if this is going to happen, this is the result. Would you remove subsidy? We have to look at it critically. Would you remove yes. subsidy? Remember what I said? Yes and no. We have to study. I will remove it, but I have to offer them what will be equivalent of what we are removing. So your answer of subsidy is yes and no? Yes. And yes. No. Would you yes. remove subsidy? Yes, but because yes, I, because I'm going to use the resources to do something that will benefit. But if I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to remove it. Okay. You must be able to offer something in replacement of what you're trying to do. I cannot spend $40 billion on subsidy and spend 50% of that in education and health. Even in security. Where our security budget has not been up to that. Are you saying that subsidy is more important than security of life and property? These are things you must do. You must be able to say, if we keep this, we will not get this. If we keep this, we will not get this. But because of mistrust, I will say that subsidies are scam. And I still maintain it. So we have to look at it. How much are we importing? Who is consuming it? Why are we going to keep this? And there's so many scams all over the place, including the cost of governance. We're going to look at it. It's not going to be a business as you are going. And that is why, why people are telling you, oh, it's good as the economy. It's not a good idea. It's not a good because they know that if I'm at the number one position, I'll be able to say, no, you can't continue with this. So they want a situation where it will continue. But let Peter be, be here. So if I'm qualified to be vice president, I'm qualified to be president. Okay. On that note.